Welcome back to Weird Stuff in a Can. Today I've got a toucan special for you and it's Fray Bentos Meaty Puds. So yeah, Fray Bentos Meaty Puds, this is from the same brand as the canned pies we've been looking at already in the series. Interestingly, same sort of price. This was £1.50 for one of these and it's about half the size of one of their pies in terms of weight. That's 425 grams. That is... 200 grams, less than half the size. But I think these are pitched on their convenience. These cook in the microwave for 90 seconds and they're done. Well, that's the theory anyway. So we probably need a little preamble about what the word pudding means in British English. Really, it's a very, very diverse term. The word pudding means just about anything. And I'll put a non-exhaustive list of pudding types on the screen right now. Basically, this is a suet pudding. So it's a meat and gravy enclosed in a sort of pastry that's normally cooked in a steam basin. This obviously is going to be microwaved. So I've got two varieties today. I've got just steak and steak and kidney. Steak and kidney is usually my favourite for pie fillings and the like, so I'm expecting to like this one better than this one. I've never really had these before, although obviously I have had homemade puddings before now. So we'll do the ingredients on the steak and kidney. I think we're just going to assume that the steak one is going to be very similar, but without kidney. So the ingredients are water, wheat flour, beef 10%, pork kidney 9%, beef fat, modified maize starch, salt, acidity regulators, which are malic acid and fumaric acid, onion powder, barley malt extract, tomato paste, raising agent, yeast extract, flavoring, which is white pepper, beef extract, chicory extract, stabilizer, xanthan gum, sugar, color, which is plain caramel, tomato powder, garlic powder. Now the notion with these is that you open them, you turn them upside down on a plate and microwave for 90 seconds, which we will do in a moment. I have skipped breakfast this morning to justify having two of these for my lunch. Normally I think what the serving size is recommended to be one of these per person, but I've skipped breakfast. In fact, you may be able to hear my stomach rumbling from time to time. I apologize for that. So I'm gonna have both of these and I thought I'd have some mash with them. And since we're going for something that's really instant and quick, I'm gonna go for some instant mash as well. So I saw this brand and I've never tried it before. Idaho and Perfect Mash with cheddar cheese flavored. And all we do here is add boiling water and it makes instant mash. Obviously I've had instant mash before. I haven't had this brand. I normally like lumpy mash made from real potatoes, but I don't hate instant mash. So we'll give that a try. And just to make this instant mash a bit of a better thing, I've got some crispy fried onions, which I'll scatter over the top. I'm not expecting that there's gonna be very much to see here, but we'll open one of these before we go to the kitchen. I am gonna use the pull tab because I don't think the can opener will work on these cans. It's a plastic can with a metal lid. Okay, and so what we have is some suet pastry, and we can see some gravy and jelly around the side there, and that pastry will go all the way around the outside casing of the thing, and enclosed inside there should be some meat and gravy. That's the theory. Let's get to the kitchen, cook these, and then we'll come back and taste them. Instructions here are really simple. We just invert that onto a plate like that. We put that in the microwave for 90 seconds, and then we take it out and let it stand for 30 seconds before taking off this dish. I'm gonna cook them both separately and serve them on separate plates and then I'll make the mash. So yeah, it might surprise you to see me using a, a pull tab, but in this particular case, there's no alternative. Right, first one is done. Oh boy, that's a bit of a mess, but never mind. Okay, second one in. Meanwhile, the mash. So we're going for 475 ml of boiling water not specified in the instructions, but I'm going to do it anyway. I've got some nice Irish butter here. So I'm going to put a knob of butter in there and then the potato granules straight in and give it a good mix to try and wet it all together. Meanwhile, the second pudding is out of the microwave and that's done a similar thing. The gravy's come out and I kind of can't resist just snipping some of my homegrown chives into this mashed potato. I, I guess I should be tasting this as it comes out the packet, but this video is more about the puddings. So anyway, I'm gonna snip in some of these homegrown chives, which are just so lovely and fresh at the moment. Now you've gotta have some semblance of something green on the plate. Okay, now it says fluff it up with a fork, so I will do that. Oh, it looks all right. Both of these puddings, when I lifted the tin, have just fallen apart and come out onto the plate like that. I don't know if that's normal. So zero marks for presentation. Okay, alongside each of those, we'll have a little scoop of mash and some of these crispy onions 
on the top there. Okay, let's go and give this a taste. Okay then, so these are only about two minutes out of the microwave, so they could still be really, really hot. So it's just steak on the left, steak and kidney on the right. So we'll try the just steak one first. Maybe I should have used full size plates for this. Well, there's quite an impressive amount of meat in there for a small pudding. It's, it's not bad. God, I don't know if you can hear my stomach going. So. Yeah, that's right. I'm not completely convinced by this pastry. It's really gummy. If you made a homemade steamed suet pudding, the pastry would not be as gummy as this. But we've got to make allowances for the fact that it is a canned product. There's a reasonable amount of meat in there and it's nice and tender and the gravy is very rich and savoury. That is what I would call a good beef gravy. And yeah, this mash is actually pretty nice, especially with all the extra bits I added. Okay, so that's the just steak. The steak and kidney now. Now a lot of people don't like kidney and that's fine, you know. I really do. And a steak and kidney pie for me is really the king of pies. Let's give that all a proper taste. Actually not an awful lot of diff flavour difference. I think they've probably pitched this for... I mean I can't see... Let's see if we can find a piece of kidney. Let's have a proper taste with a piece of kidney in there. It's really really mild tasting and a little bit of a disappointment actually. I, I quite like a steak and kidney pie to taste of kidney and I'm not really getting any of that here. It just kind of tastes the same as the steak pie, perhaps a little bit less rich actually, but with a different texture obviously because of the kidney. So that was Fray Bentos Meaty Puds. Not bad I would say and certainly a really good stopgap to have in the cupboard because it's basically a savoury meal in two minutes from a standing start and that's pretty good. They're not paying me anything to say this by the way. Yeah, the pastry is a bit doughy compared to a suet crust that you'd make at home, but it's not actually a bad thing. It's kind of halfway between a pastry and a dumpling anyway. In some ways, I think a lot of people are going to say that makes it more satisfying and hearty. So here's an interesting thing. Steak and kidney pie as a general thing is my favourite pie. However, of these two puddings, the just steak one I think was the better one. So there we go. Fray Bentos meaty puds. Weird stuff in a can on atomic shrimp. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.